Hello and welcome to another episode on the Property and Lending Podcast. Uh, as always, we've got Ferdy and Mark from Power Loans with us. How are you, gentlemen? Good. How are you going? I'm always good. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> we've got we've got a pretty interesting episode today. We're talking about the current the current state of the market and um, what's happening and how we should navigate these waters. You know, difficult, I guess changing times of interest rates and elections and, and all the rest. So before we discuss, you know, what's happening in the current market with interest rates, uh, how does that affect your current loan? How does that affect getting a new loan? How does it affect refinancing? And obviously, who better to speak to than Power Loans about it? So, um, Betty, if you want to kick us off, just, you know, what you're seeing in the market currently with interest rates, what's happening with current uh, what are the banks doing in response and what do you have any forecasts of what, what's to come? Um, so right now with you know, interest rates kind of feeling like on a weekly basis, they're going up, whether it's variable or fixed, we're finding, you know, a lot of our pre-approval applications that we put through, we're having to like call up new pricing, um, new interest rates, sometimes with, you know, clients that are just servicing as well on the calculator. With the rates going up, obviously, that affects their borrowing capacity as well. So we're finding ourselves trying to stay on top of everything that we've got in the pipeline at the moment. Um, it's really hard. One of the biggest questions that you know Mark and I get now um, is customers asking, should we fix or should we do it variable? And it's something, you know, during COVID, it was you know pretty an easy response. What I would do is I would fix for that low rate as, as, as long as possible. But now... Does anyone know the answer to what's going to go on with the rates, especially with labor coming in now? Everyone's like, oh, labor's in, you know, been voted in. It's just going to start going up. But I think that's the biggest question that, you know, that's coming our way. And we're finding ourselves reworking a lot of our deals to try and stay on top of, you know, a very fast, rapid um, interest rates going up constantly. So what do you reckon, Mark? I was just going to say, yeah, on top of all of that, it's a lot of repricing as well for our existing clients on our books. Um, just updating them, like as in whenever we hear um, one of the lenders are going to go up in a few days, we contact our clients that are on variable rates and just let them know to expect the increase um, that is, that's expected, that's, been, that's going to be announced um, and trying to sort of fix any portion of their loan if they want at the current rates before they go up in the coming days as well. So it's a lot of work with our clients um, already on our books, as well as what Fede is saying. I, I'm, I put a pre-approval through yesterday and the rates went up today. So naturally, we're going to have to call the clients and let them know because uh, because it's a pre-approval, you can't lock in the rate. So if the rates go up on you um, during your pre-approval state before a contract's been signed and before um, the purchase has been lodged with the bank, you will be subjected to the new uh, rate. And that's across the board. That's all lenders. You can't lock in rates uh, through a pre-approval. It has to be with a purchase or a refinance. And, and that's another conversation that we're being asked to have with most of our customers or all our customers at the moment that are looking for the fixed option is, and one thing that the lenders are pushing, obviously compliance is having that conversation in regards to the rate lock fee. And what the rate lock fee is, like if you're refinancing or you're purchasing and you're going for a fixed rate, in this market, if you don't have a rate lock in place, unless your house settles within the week, you're, you're going to be looking at a higher interest rate on, your, on the day of settlement. So that's a conversation that we're having with a lot of our customers. You know, a few lenders have do have deals at the moment. They charge a five fifty or a six fifty rate lock fee, flat fee, and the other ones from memory, Mark, was it a point five or point oh five percent? Um, point one, point one percent, and point one five. Point one or point one five percent of the loan amount. So that's something that we're you know a conversation that we're constantly having because before this started happening, we had a few customers that are going through the fixed period. And then once it comes on cinnamon day, it does show a bit of a higher interest rate. And that's where I guess the rate lock really does come into play in a market like this. So are you having any, when it comes to, you know, I guess that's regarding new loans, the, the rate locks regarding refinancing, are there, are there any issues that you guys are experiencing or customers are experiencing? Is it still the same process? Uh, or is there, you know, things changing over time? What What are you seeing changing at the moment? With, um, regards to re with the refinance, it's, it's pretty much, um, nothing's really changed. It's just a lot more questions from assessors now, um, putting loan applications through. 
Um, a few more documentation that we have to prepare. I think because with the buffer rate going up and the borrowing capacity getting a little bit more tighter, banks are make, you know, doing a, a little bit more checks to make sure that the customer is in the best position to be paying this loan forward. But with refinances right now, we're seeing a lot of cashback offers being offered by lenders, um, big cashback offers, you know, Mark, from memory, I mean, I think one of our lenders, if it was over a mil, it's a $6,000 cashback. And which, you know, an average refinance at the moment is between two to four grand as well for any loan over 250 grand. So right now, they're trying to make it more lucrative, in, you know, because all lenders are increasing their rates, but they're trying to make it that little bit more better with refinances. If anything, right now, refinancing your home loan, you're getting quite an exceptional uh, cashback offer while you're refinancing. Yeah. Is there any, I mean, everyone's kind of, so all the, all the rates are increasing, you know, everyone's passing on rate increases and whatnot, and it's getting expensive for everyone to hold onto their loans or get new loans. Is there anyone out there that's doing the opposite? Like taking advantage of everything going up and saying, hey, if we, if we go a bit the other way, we'll get a lot of clients and customers. Anyone offering besides the cash back, you know, fixed rates, are fixed rates going higher than the variables? Like, is there any, is there any relief for, for customers at the moment, or is it just getting expensive? <laughs> I'll let Mark start this one. <laughs> uh, sorry, I zoned out for a second. <clears throat> no, so <laughs> no, just in regards to, um, so what Kane was asking, is there any lenders out there? So we're seeing a lot of the big four lenders that are going up in their rates, like considerably crazy um, increases. But pretty much the way it works, and just from the experience in the industry, is that a few of the second tier or third tier lenders try to take advantage of those uh, advantage of those scenarios or situations where they can offer customers a lower rate. But at some point, their rates are going to have to increase anyway. Because once one lender increases their rate, everyone else follows. It might not be straight away. And every lender has that portfolio of what they can offer for a certain amount, for a certain interest rate to keep them in. So now we're having like third or second, second or third tier lenders where most of the other lenders, the fixed rates for, a, for example, a two year fix is in the threes. We still got some lenders that are doing just, you know, just below the threes at 2.99%, those second or third tier lenders. So it's just shy of the 1%. Yeah. And yeah. just before we hit record, you were talking about um, the RBA's next meeting um, next Tuesday and your expected results. What are you expecting to see the RBA? do and um and how will that affect the the banks um i think we we're just talking before previously where there's a lot of talk going around that the rbi is going to increase the the rate by another point four, and i believe if they do i just i i just believe that pretty much all lenders will be going towards increasing it by the four point uh, the four point four as well which yeah. is a bit scary i mean obviously that's just going to affect servicing borrowing um, you know, it, it affects, it really affects how much the customer can really borrow when it comes down to it. Yeah. So right now, I mean, if, if you're, if you have an existing loan or, you know, definitely people with existing loans, I, I would be recommending, you know, giving your brokers a call for sure and seeing what's the best option. Um, if we expect the rates to continue to increase, you know, trying to work out what's the best, best option for you. For your finances and for your current situation um mark are there any like is would you agree with that advice rather than just kind of sitting around and letting the interest rates keep increasing on your variable loans or have i looked at it wrong no 100 percent. i mean the banks react very quickly and actually the banks are very proactive they're not reactive so um i think a lot of people they watch the news are like for example today uh, one of the big four increased their fixed uh, their two year fixed rates by 0.5 percent. The one year fixed went up by 0.7 percent. They're very big jumps, and this is all in anticipation to the RBA next meeting, which is not even next Tuesday. That's how much earlier they're going. They're going on, uh, on the seventh. The seventh of June is the is the meeting that they'll answer, um, and they're reacting like ten days before. Whereas when you know you guys hear about it on the news. You guys are reacting to the news, but the banks have already um, proactively increased their rates. So definitely jumping on the phone with us um, just to go through your structure. I mean, I had, a, I had a customer that I was on the phone with yesterday looking at his existing loan that we, we pulled through for a purchase just a few months ago and seeing, should we reprice it? Should we, should we fix a portion of the loan? But because he had 
um, almost the same as the loan balance in the redraw, just some ca just cash he had sitting there in his savings. Um, you know, we decided that it is better not to fix it because even if the rates go up to 5%, 5% of zero is still zero. So, um, I mean, it really depends on your cash reserve sitting there as well as to what you should do, but everyone is definitely very different. So we can't really um, sort of give advice over the, the video. We can sort of recommend based on your personal circumstances when you guys call um, because, yeah, everyone definitely is very different. For sure. For sure. So definitely get on, get into, get in touch with your brokers and sort out, sort out your loans and make sure you get the best rates at the moment. Cause, uh, Just call your brokers, we're brokers very slowing down. down. Yeah, it's not slowing down, but get in contact with your brokers, whether it's, you know, Mark or I or any other broker. Just have a health check. Right now, it's so important to have a home loan health check right now. Just to, even if it's just a background, even to, you know, give us a call. Nothing needs to be done if nothing needs to be done, if there's no financial benefit. But have that conversation to make sure that you are on the best product or the best rate possible because right now, and I know personally I'm doing that for myself, Mark is, everyone else that I was speaking to, they just wanted to do a, a bit of a health check on what their you know, home loan is, which is pretty much our most expensive debt. So that's something that we should be looking at now, and it's so important, especially leading up to the financial year end, where you know, pretty much all of Australia look at you know, their financials, their tax returns, anything like that. This is a really good opportunity to do so, especially if you've got an investment property, get in contact with your accountant. Getting in contact with your broker, look at the depreciation, and you would know a lot more about that. Which leads me to my next question towards you, KM, is how is this affecting in regards to, you know, coming from a buyer's agent? What I, I think we were just discussing this before, where I'm beginning to see prices listed now on realestate.com domain, where we're moving into that coming from offers welcome. Are the real estate agents getting less cocky or? They're just looking for more work to do now, or they're just, yeah, you know, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, I thought I escaped the podcast without getting asked a question. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Thanks. Um, no, definitely, definitely, we could start, we're seeing a, um, a shift in sentiment from, from sellers and from agents. Um, just today, I was showing you before we, we recorded, just today, I've had multiple agents call me. Uh, telling me about all these properties that they've got and they want to work with me and whatnot. And, you know, not that they didn't want to work with me before, but uh, when the market's hot, you definitely don't get them calling you, you know, yeah. as much. Um, and so I'm, I'm specifically talking about Sydney at the moment, um, by the way. Um, and, you know, we are seeing, you know, prices listed, agents calling around. This week I had two agents knock on my door um, and give me, you know, the calendar with a photo of our home on it. Um, and, you know, just making sure that we know that they're around. Um, I've had an agent in Queensland call me. Oh, I've had multiple agents in Queensland call me a few times, actually asking if I wanted to sell my properties um, so in Brizzy, even though Brizzy hasn't really slowed down either. So we're definitely seeing a little bit of a sentiment change in Sydney. Um, interstate, Brisbane and Adelaide still running pretty strong and pretty hot, to be honest. I think they're the only two cities um, we'll find out soon when CoreLogic releases a new data, but um, I believe they're the only two cities still to record positive growth over the last 30 days, whereas yeah. every other city in, in the country has recorded the plateau or, or slight minus. Um, so I think agents are, you know, and I think there's going to be a lot of agents caught, get caught out in this market because there's a lot of, a lot of young agents joined the, the, the industry um, during a very hot market and, it was very easy to sell property. You just had to take a photo, put it on realestate.com and it was selling yeah. and selling for a lot more than it needed to. Um, so now they actually have to do a bit of work. And we usually see when the market turns, we use a lot of agents from the industry. Um, they realize it's not that easy. Uh, it comes back down to relationships and whatnot um, that you should have been forming during the hot market. So yeah, a bit of a change. Uh, prices going uh, on these things, agents calling, um, less people turning up to open homes. You know, we, we've been to a few open homes around Sydney um, over the last uh, four or five weeks with a few customers. Less people there. Um, yeah, definitely. Are you seeing? Effect. Are you seeing the market going down? Like, are you seeing like you going to these auctions or you know you're signing these contract sales in New South Wales or interstate? Do you see the market going down? Like, not so much a slowdown, but do you see so they're not going really going for those prices that we saw during COVID. Yeah, I don't, 
I don't. I wouldn't call it going. Uh, the prices are not going down, right? Not from what I'm seeing at the moment, but they're fairly stable. Or instead of having 30, 40, 50 people competing on the property, you've only got two or three people and you're paying a fair price as opposed to overpriced. So I don't believe the prices have gone down yet, um, but it's more so rather than, you know, the house is worth a million and people are paying 1.4 for it. The house yeah. is worth a million and people are paying a million for it. So and you're not getting goes, bargains, yeah. but you're paying fair, fair value. I think that goes hand in hand with the, with the lending, with the borrowing going down as well, with the buffer rate going up. I think it's sure. slowly, slowly going hand in hand with customers now knowing they don't have that much, you know, sorry, they don't have access to that much in their equity or, you know, to purchase through their borrowing capacity. Where it's now getting a little bit more tighter where customers are going in, you know, a little, you know, not hot headed where we saw our auctions last year. It was just pretty much, yep, 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 yep to my maximum. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that goes hand in above hand. The maximum. Above the maximum. And I think that goes hand in hand with the lending. I just see myself with these auction numbers going down, like you're saying, and, you know, they're pricing these, they're now putting prices up on these houses. I want to know where it's going to end in regards to the rates going up. Are we going to see a stop or are we just, like for the last, Mark, how long has it been now, Mark? A couple of months since rates have been going up and it feels like it's been weekly? Since November. Since November. So I, I, I want to know, look, when does that stop? Because unless that stops, I, I believe the markets keep continue, not going down like you said, but stabilizing a little bit more, maybe going a little bit, a little, you know, little down what we think they are with the buffer rate going up and borrowing getting a lot more harder. Yeah. I mean, I think definitely as the interest rates continue to rise, you will see prices drop. Um, I don't, it hasn't happened yet on a wide scale. Um, so that, you know, but I think if it continues to rise, it will, you know, the, the clear obvious flow on effect will be, uh, prices, you know, slowing down, um, and then reducing in, in, in certain areas. And that's why, you know, we always say it's so important, um, to speak to, you know, professionals when it comes to buying property, because yeah, when the market's hot, you can throw a stone at anything and it's going to be worth more the next day. But when the market's not hot, um, yeah, there's a bit more than just guessing, and just buying any property because not all not all areas are equal, not all locations are made equal either. So um, where does it stop? I mean, obviously, as the interest rates go up, you know, borrowing powers go down, less people are buying, so you have less demand. Um, supply goes up a little bit usually because people want to, you know, their existing loans become expensive, so people want to sell and cash out and whatnot. So you get a little bit of an imbalance, um, and perhaps more more um, more power to the buyer. And that's what happens to the market. You know, that's when it starts going down because buyers become picky, um, more demand, more, more supply than demand. So where does it stop? Who knows? Because the RBA, you know, changes the rates based off a lot of things, not just the real estate market, um, you know, wide scale economics. But as long as they keep going up, it'll, it'll keep, you know, affecting the market and affecting buyer sentiment. But, you know, caveat to that, if you are a buyer, and you can get into the market. This is a time to invest. Absolutely, I, I, that's this what I believe. Yeah, this is a time to buy a property and buy multiple properties. You know, and don't be scared about interest rates going up because interest rates will always go up. Interest rates will always go down, and property markets will always fluctuate. But this is a time where we can go in. We can be picky. We can get really good investments in really good areas, and really plan and strategize. And then once that market starts to move up again. You yeah. capitalize so Absolutely. much. So this is a time, this we'll, is investor's dream. Yeah, and I think we we're just talking about that. Like we have a customer in common and we're just saying that he's getting like we he's getting in the market at the right time with, you know, real estate agents now are more willing to negotiate those prices where before we'd be like, oh, you don't want to get it nowhere at the bank to have a buyer on the, other, on the other line. But now it's such a great time to get into the market because now you have a bit more time to breathe a bit more time to make a decision instead of, you know, making a quick snap decision to make sure you get that property. And I believe right now is a good time to invest or purchase because you've got time to, my big thing is time to breathe and take time to make a decision on what you really want. Where last year or the last two years, maybe it just felt like customer would call you, we're looking at your house, bang, 15, 20 minutes later, we've bought the house or we've put a deposit down or wherever it may be. And I think this is a really good time, especially for investors, investors to come and see a buyer's agent because right now it's so important to be speaking to someone that actually looks at this on a daily basis. Again, I, wanna, you know, 
our customers approach us and ask us for our opinions, we can only give so much. I think another customer we have in common was saying that you need to be speaking to the person that looks look uh, looks at this on a daily basis. He's the one who's going to be able to save you on that purchase. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And like something that we bang on week in, week out, uh, you know, you guys probably see me saying it, you know, markets will be in markets. There's just always opportunities. There's just always opportunities. And simply because the market as a general whole is on a decline, and we did a, I did a video as well um, last week about it as well, where, you know, there's always opportunities. And we're buying for people at the moment across all of Australia and people making a lot of money. Um, but you really need to understand the data and, and know where to buy and where to look to, to make a purchase rather than just in your own backyard, you know, buying something nearby, and, you know, your mom lives there or your dad lives there or your dog lives nearby or whatever it is, you know, and buying, buying close to it. So there's a bit, there's a bit to it. Um, and that's why, yeah, for sure. Speak to your brokers, find out what you need to do to, to sort out your funds, get the best rates and then um, speak to professionals in the industry who can help you really capitalize and make money because there's going to be a lot of people. Sorry. There's going to be some people making a lot of money in the next yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Um, so okay, with the, um, with the prices sort of cooling or maybe over the six, the next six months, maybe slightly declining like in Sydney and Melbourne, the big capital cities. Um, do you find that even though the rates are going up, do you find it more attainable to secure a positively bid property in those big capital markets? as opposed to sort of last year when the prices were crazy, it was like very, it was almost impossible to find that. Um, positive still, I think Sydney's far away. The, 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 the difference between, you know, the gap between rents and, and purchase prices are so far away that even if the prices were to drop, you know, and drop by a bit, you'd be far away. So, you know, the average yield in Sydney is under 3%. And typically you need to be around 4.5% to be neutral. So I think it will be fairly difficult even with prices coming down because rents typically don't catch up that fast. Rents will go up a little bit in this time as well. Um, but it might be still fairly difficult. It, it definitely won't be my go-to CD to try and find a positive liquid property for sure. I was, about, um, I was just about to ask as well. Like, I, mean, I didn't know it was that low. The average yield in New South Wales is under 3%. Like. Uh, in Sydney, yeah. In Sydney, definitely under 3%. I think it's 2.86 last time I checked, give or take. Um, it's very, very low in Sydney. You know, you, your average rent on a you know million dollar property is around five to six fifty. It's not it's not a lot, right? Uh we're, we're whilst we're buying in Brisbane and Adelaide and Perth and wherever, um, you know, these other areas, your purchase price is five hundred and your rent is, you know, four fifty to five fifty. So um, and that's just normal there. So um, your yields will get better in the major capitals, um, but positive on a standalone residential, you know, without a granny flat or dual income sort of um, just a standard property, it'll be fairly difficult to to get a positive. Uh, it definitely wouldn't be my go-to city for if you were looking for a positive really good property. Was that... Does, I don't know, does that answer the question? <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. I was just thinking because the rent now, like our property, the lease agreement for our tenant um, expires in a month or something and the rent went up by like 60 bucks a week or something. And the property manager was just telling me, if you go on realestate.com, there's nothing there. Like it, as landlords have a lot of power now to increase their rents because there's very limited supply on the market. So I was just thinking if rent is going to keep going up, um, and with migration, I assume, like, to pick up as well. Um, surely, like, rent is going to keep going up. And with prices coming down, maybe it will meet maybe 3 4%. I don't know. Yeah. No, well, for sure. I mean, the rents will definitely go up. Um, and and the, the supply for rentals is is almost non-existent at the moment um, in, in some very specific areas. Um, but, you know, that's what we've been seeing interstate outside of Sydney for years. And we've been capitalizing on that. Um, I think the, just the gap is so wide that the prices would have to drop significantly for it to become positive, but you, you'll definitely be getting better cash flow results out of your properties uh, over the next couple of years um, with rents increasing and prices slowing or, or stabilizing for sure. So um, 
you know, if if you've got the budget for it and, you know, it makes it a little bit more attainable and easier to hold on to the property, then, yeah, Sydney might be a, a good investment option for you. Um, but, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, might be tough for it to become positive. It might need a bit of a bigger jump for yeah. it to get to a positive state, yeah. Cool. Any uh, Any other questions? I was just going to say, when you were talking about repricing uh, customers who already, like they're not, um, just in terms of repricing or restructuring your loan, there are just two things that I think I want to mention. So I think there's two reasons why people might may be reluctant to do the process. Number one, they may think that it requires a full application, like when you first get your home loan and they're not bothered sort of um, collecting a bunch of documents, submitting it, spending you know, several, like waiting for the pre approval to come in, purchasing, like it's a long process and it's, it's time consuming. So um, when it comes to repricing, I literally did it for my customer yesterday. I called him, hey, how much do you want to fix? Like, this is the current rate. You want to fix this much? No worries. Called the lender. They locked in the rate from that day. No rate lock fee required. They locked in the rate from that day. They just send the customer a letter of variation. They sign it, scan it, email it back. And it's done five to 10 business days later, you'll see it on your app. So it's a very easy process to done to be done. So I think that's one myth that we wanted to, I wanted to mention. The second one is it doesn't cost you anything. When you come to see us, whether it's for a pre-approval purchase or refinance, there's no charge. Like there may be lender setup fees and stuff. If you're moving to a new lender or annual package fee or something like that, but from us, there's no fee whatsoever. So when we do this um, home loan check, it's free of charge. You don't lose anything. Um, and just by telling us a few figures, it might take 10 minutes or something and we can sort of figure out is it best to do a full refinance with a full application, get the cash back if you're on the horrible right now or if your customer is willing to play ball, we can potentially get you a better rate with your current customer, with your current sort of bank. Um, so yeah, just two things that I think people would have um, been reluctant to get in contact with us for, but they're both sort of... And the main point that Mark made there as well is that for... For us to refinance any any customer, and especially under compliance, there has to be a financial benefit. So there is absolutely no risk of coming to to power loans or to your broker in general because you're just getting a health check on your home. If we can do something, we would. If not, and there's no financial benefit, we're going to try and do our very best to negotiate with your current lender to try and get you on the best deal with them as well. Because sometimes it's just not worth moving across for some savings. It's, it's just gonna it doesn't outweigh the the whole thing of the thirty year term. And there are other reasons as well. I had a customer message me yesterday and he was saying, he's like a new client. I, I haven't done his previous loans, but he was just saying, hey, I sort of, I, I purchased with a guarantor loan, um, you know, six months ago or something. My brother's looking to also use my parents' security as a guarantor loan. So we want to release mine. Um, can you give me sort of just a rough property value of it? So we'll jump on our sort of um, on property hub, which is what the banks use as well, which we have access to give you a rough price. Um, and if it's sitting and if it's sitting there at like eighty percent, and we can release the guarantor with no LMI charge as well, that's another thing we can look at doing as well. So, um, yeah, there's other reasons as well, but obviously the biggest one is to make sure you have the correct structure so that um, you know using your cash against your property to save your own interest. Uh, we're making use of that as well as obviously securing the lowest rate possible on the market. Yeah, I think um, definitely. The biggest uh, barrier to entry or the barrier to doing any of this is people do think it's quite time consuming and you need know, to find a lot of documents and whatnot. Um, but really, it really isn't. And, and, you know, from personal experience and from my customers' experience, you know, fairly mark both super, super quick at what they do and very good at what they do. So, you know, a oh, 10 minute, 15 minute phone call could be saving you, you know, thousands of dollars, if not more. So and we, don't and be we're also going to have um, new tools in place to gather that information as well to make it easier for our customers, where it be for an online portal. So we're working on that at the moment to get that in place as well. Because we yeah. do know how draining it can be. So we're going to try and make it just that little bit more easier for them. Exciting things happening at Paolo. Putting, what is it? Putting the power. <laughs> <in there. laughs> um, so I think that's a, I think we'll call that a, call that an episode. Um, if you do want to get in contact with Mark or Ferdy, the details are in the show notes. Uh, so you can find them there. And obviously on our social media, you'll find everyone's details everywhere. Um, get in contact with them, find, save yourself some money, get yourself a better rate, get a health check. And we've got a pretty special episode next week. Pretty excited about it. Uh, stay tuned. We'll keep it a surprise. Uh, Mark, I know Mark's really, really excited about it. He's been like, 
men crushing on it all day. So, <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week for a pretty special episode. Um, and don't forget then. all the customers that were to come to us for a pre-approval. Then we give you uh, KM's contacts to get in contact <laughs> with him once you get the pre-approval first. <laughs> It'll make you get, get make you rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's the property of lending promise. Um, all right, before we get sued for saying stuff we shouldn't be saying, yeah. ciao. See you guys next week. <laughs> See you guys next week. See ya.